Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract a signal from the noise. This is our day two wrap up, wrapping up the show here in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services or AWS reInvent. Reinvent our second year here uh, with theCUBE, and really the breakout year for Amazon Web Services, really targeting the enterprise, really continuing their journey of accelerated traction, accelerated momentum, just adding on more and more use cases, data points, services. They are iterating fast, introducing new stuff, really extending their lead in the enterprise. People are catching up though. IBM, HP, OpenStack, that, that lead isn't as big as it used to be, but still, they got a good sizable lead. We're here for the wrap, I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman and Jeff Kelly. Guys, uh, the show wrap up. Big lead, but not so much of a big lead, Stu. People are focused on yeah. catching Amazon. So, John, people are focused, but Amazon has a tremendous lead. First of all, you talk from a revenue standpoint, latest numbers out there are that if you took all of the other infrastructure as a service providers, put them together, Amazon's 5X what they're doing. And, you know, big takeaway from the show, same as last year, is the flywheel of innovation that Andy Jassy talks to. If they can keep moving and growing and adding new services at the torrid pace that they're doing, they will continue to separate themselves from the pack, John. So, no offense to our good friends at, you know, Oracle and IBM and HP, but I don't consider them playing the same game as Amazon does. Uh, they are such scale. Talk to James Hamilton, talk about you know, millions of servers that they have out there and build for you know, just tremendous services. Look at what they announced with Aurora, uh, look at all the other pieces they have, visionary stuff that they're doing with Lambda. Uh, you know, Amazon, this is their market to, 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 to lose and I don't see anybody catching them well, anytime Stu, good soon. analysis, I would agree with you there, but I would also kind of just say, it's hard to put the comparison into the buckets of infrastructure as a service, and sure, 5X, but they're just getting started. Amazon's different. They're a bundled company. Uh, Amazon, um, pieces written on injuries and Horowitz about bundling. Dave Vellante, um, our, our, our partner, wrote a great post on economics. A lot of bundling. Amazon is a retail company. Out of their DNA of retail emerged this amazing business model of bundling. And if you look at Amazon, and I want to get your take on this, guys, is it's all about the packaging. Retail's about the packaging, and the platform has to be essentially down to zero, so more platform, better packaging options. So on the web services side, the emphasis of these announcements are very tooling oriented. Yeah. In a sequence of an operating system. Yeah, John, John, great point here. Uh, so many times I listen to enterprise vendors and when they come out with a product, they feel it's a checkbox. There's some space that they had to go after, something they need to do. When Amazon comes out of it with, with, with a new solution, they said, this is customer driven. Uh, you know, we, we, Doing their own database makes a lot of sense. Having it MySQL compatible uh, means that there, there's a clear way that they can get into this market, add onto the services. Uh, one thing I really like is it's not, you know, oh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service. Amazon just is building you know, the, the new layer, that ecosystem, that enterprise application store to give customers what they need and a big partner ecosystem. We talked to a lot of their partners here, you know, management, security, all these other components that are adding on and growing the, the power that Amazon Amazon has in this marketplace. Other observations for the folks out there, besides get, before we get into the announcements uh, that, that represent, in my opinion, the big, biggest stories, is the VC community is here in force. And certainly in Silicon Valley, all the top VCs are here, but they're not pimping themselves up. They're not doing the PR thing. They're working. There's a lot of business getting done here. This show, as uh, Mike Dalba just said, looks like the new VM world. This is a place where it's enterprise, it's big, and there's deals getting done. I'm seeing the VCs huddling. These are general partners, this isn't like associates. This is like guys out making the decisions. It's super exciting. And then you got the big companies here. We talked to Informatica, we're talking to SAP, and, and they're all here. You have the startups and the big guys in one cage match. Guys, what's your take on this? Well, the, yeah, the big guys, uh, having just talked to SAP a little bit earlier today, it's very interesting, you know, they have made it clear with some of the acquisitions they've made, and they're, they, need, they know they need to move to the cloud. Um, 
but, but, but they also recognize they can't do it on their own, and they're embracing AWS uh, as a way to do that. Um, they, don't, they don't look at AWS really as competing with them on the database and big data space. I tend to disagree with that a little bit, but um, you know, it's really interesting. You're seeing SAP here, and then you see startups that are just you know, coming out of the woodworks in, the, in my space, in the data warehousing space, and analytics, and, and data integration. So there's a lot of action here, and I do, I, I've mentioned before on theCUBE that uh, this week, it's interesting, a lot of, most of the customers that um, AWS has put up on the stage, the use cases are data analytics. And uh, I, I think that's really one of the areas where AWS adds a lot of value. There's a lot of data being created. They make it much more easy to consume, analyze, and do uh, predictive things with that data than trying to do that all on-premise on, on yourself, so. Stu, this is a, to our point we just talked about, which is, they're an operating system, so there's a data fabric in there, so it's not a big data show, it's a operating system show for the world. Yeah, John, uh, you know, Andy Jassy said, you know, Amazon's looking to be the new normal. This is what you're building on. You made the analogy of uh, this being like VMworld. It does in many ways, ways remind me of that, uh, but there's that undercurrent, of course. Uh, Amazon's making a lot of money fast, they're growing their ecosystem, but how fast are they getting too much of a percentage of the wallet, putting too much pressure uh, on their partners, you know, driving down uh, margins across the place, and if they have too much power, there's that backlash, and there definitely are people looking for alternative alternatives. Uh, Microsoft's clear number two, Google's moving in that environment, and of course, all the other guys are building their clouds. Yes, Stu, uh, break down the competition a little bit. You mentioned HP, IBM, Oracle, not really playing the same game. What about Microsoft and Google? Yeah, uh, you know, Jeff, first of all, I mean, Microsoft has so many touch points into the enterprise. Uh, most Amazon customers, even if they're all in on Amazon, they're running Office 365, they're using some of the other uh, tools. We, one of the interviews we did, you know, oh yeah, absolutely, they're using SharePoint, kind of move that over to the cloud. So they're all using Microsoft, they have that utility. Uh, I, I think, you know, the operating system the new operating system is the cloud, so Microsoft is helping people to get there. Of course, when they do that move, it now makes it a playing field that, well, if I was on the desktop, I've got Microsoft. VMware broke that up a little bit, but now if I go to the cloud, with things like Docker and some of the other uh, options out there to be able to make it easier for me to move from one cloud to another, uh, th th there's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough to get that loyalty. Uh, and Amazon said is they need to, you know, every hour earn that business. Mm. And, and that's a little bit of hyperbole because once you're on a solution, it does take a little bit of moving. Uh, but, you know, it's a brave new world out there for applications and where they live. Uh, we should actually be able to, with Docker, allow the application to be king, which is great for developers. Uh, you know, there was a line in the keynote today, you know, we all win with solutions like this that give customers choice and agility. I mean, agility has been one of the key words that we've talked about for the last year at all these shows. So Google has strong technology, Stu, but there you can see that they're not going aggressively right now. Obviously, we're at that event, we broke that down really well. It's like, okay, front end developers, they got to win some developer traction to earn the, the, the credibility, win, the, win a space in the ecosystem, and then building on the transport side, really, really critical. But yet, not a business focus at all. So no. I would call Google still far away from even coming close to competing, but they got the stuff going on. Um, Microsoft, the .NET community, I'm just not bullish on Microsoft. I think they're going to have a nice little space there, just like OpenStack's going to have the private cloud. So you're starting to see the swim lanes, okay? Amazon and Google really are for the, for the world, yeah. okay? Microsoft for the .NET community, maybe the enterprise, and OpenStack as private cloud. Do you agree or disagree? Hey, hey, hey John, so Microsoft just open source .NET, right? So if you were to ask me, you know, a few weeks ago, all right, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, who can leverage open source and leverage those communities to move things forward? Boy, you'd be surprised to say that Microsoft might be the most open of them. Satya Nadella has a real you know, open source ethos here. Google leverages a lot of open source, gives some things back. We wouldn't yeah, have to do that. Yeah, but it's hard to do. But Amazon doesn't give back to the open source community. Yeah. And that's something we yeah, hammered them but on. I would, here's yeah. My, yeah, but I would disagree with you. Open source is a playground. And that's a, there's an ethos there, there's a, there's a protocol. You got to be a certain breed to play in that world. Amazon doesn't try to be open source. They're not head faking. They're the, they're the playground for the open source guys to execute. So I would, that's what say I'm, they're okay there. I think they got to get more than that. If they do, they got to play nice. It's hard to take a .NET developer and turn them into open source. Either they convert over to open source, yeah, you can't be half pregnant in that market. Yeah, I can open source .NET. Is that going to drive me more Microsoft specific business? Yes, and that's not a bad thing. They got a huge install base. Just like OpenStack's not a bad thing for, say, private cloud. So, we don't know, we'll be watching this. So, 
But the question is, swim lanes, do you think they're forming or not? Yeah, John, I think that's a good point. Absolutely, Google is not you know, head-on attacking where Google is, to, Google's not attacking where Amazon is today, getting their niche in the market. Uh, they, they've got a lot of those pieces. Um, Microsoft is uh, you know, starting to encroach there. Uh, one thing, was there a price drop? I don't remember hearing it in the keynotes, which is something really surprising. We've really categorized those three players as a race to zero. Has Amazon gotten enough position in the marketplace and add enough value that they feel that they don't have to be the lowest cost option? I don't know if that's the case. Uh, I was reading comments Andy Jassy made around price drops, and he was making the point in the media that you know, we're, our value is a lot, about, a lot more than just lowering prices. Uh, I wonder if it was a tactical decision not to drop prices, make any announcements around that at this show in particular, just to kind of Amazon, highlight that Amazon point. doesn't raise prices, what they do is just add more services. So that's, I mean, that's just the game. They're, they're pushing it down to zero, that's what they want to do. But that's a good strategy, just add new, and that's what they do, they add more services. Now one thing we didn't talk about, I would like to get both of your perspectives, is the impact this is having on internal IT departments in the enterprise, and how this is impacting jobs, how this is impacting I, that market. I think it's a big impact, and I was commenting on a tweet chat that I was having, crowd chat with IBM folks yesterday, and clearly, uh, shadow IT is being reined in. And what that means, in my opinion, is that it's becoming standardized. Shadow IT was a, a tell, tail, uh, a tell for the market where it was going, right? So it was a telegraph move of saying, that's the consumption model. Shadow IT only came about because of the, the, the lack of IT <laughs> being cut Frustration edge. with IT, so, yeah. They just go buy the credit card, but no one buys millions and millions of dollars on credit cards. So what shadow IT will turn into is a formal consumption pattern. So one, this has certainly shown that. Two, there is a hybrid play here with Amazon. You can put stuff in the cloud and still keep it on premise. I still think they have a really viable shot at hybrid cloud. That's my opinion. Yeah, uh, it, it is something that we didn't have discussed much at this show, is if I go all in on cloud, do I need fewer employees in my IT department. Definitely some customers I talk to, if you were born in the cloud, I can be agile, I can do so many things, I can have developers focused on what I want. If I've got big data centers and I'm shifting over to the cloud, there's going to be a workforce adjustment and some people will get retrained, some people move into other jobs, so absolutely cloud you know, will I hate have a that shift. term all in with Amazon. That is a, that's a misnomer, I'll tell you why. All in means you're all in, not we're all in with Amazon as we're doing all a cloud product. If you're all in with Amazon, you're born in the cloud. You're all your business on Amazon. So we should, you should tell the clients, look at it. If you use the word all in on Amazon, it should mean all in. In Informatica, they said they're all in with Amazon. It's like, no, no, they're all in with their partnership with Amazon. Yeah, That's so, different. Yeah. That means they're committed to the partnership. So, so John, I'd give Amazon real good grades of talking better to the enterprise this year. They used their language, hybrid IT was there. I want to get your take. What about the developers? You know, I heard definitely microservices and Docker got some good attention. Are they still you know, beloved by the, the, the developer ecosystem? You know, Stu, I think you said it best when you were on theCUBE earlier. You said, you know, when, when Werner announced Docker, when Ben was on, there was a real uh, round of applause. I think the round of applause was, a, was an indication that, yes, this is still a developer conference, hence my comment about the VCs doing their work here. It's still about education, still about all that stuff. So I do think that they're really solid with developers, and that's going to continue for some time. I mean, the services that they're offering developers, quite frankly, is just awesome. Startup from local host to cloud with GitHub, it's all, it's all rocking and rolling. So they're solid on developers. But you know what? Great show. So, we're getting ready to wrap up here. Soon they're going to turn the lights out. We stay until they pull the plug. So let's go around and wrap this up, guys, here at Amazon this year, 2014. Um, observations. Um, you know, you're talking to a lot of people. Stu, what are you seeing? I mean, I'll start. My observation is, is that the pattern that's developing is clearly the, the, the messaging from Amazon is, we're going to win the enterprise, too. Um, we're starting now and we're serious. Not we're going to win, but we're serious. And they're showing some proof points. The other pattern is that developers want rapid deployment and the customers are buying cloud. In the hallway, the big trend that's happening that this other vendor should take notice of is Amazon's release cycle is they stay stealth, they bake it out, they use it themselves, and then they get it to large scale, then they release it. The um, Apollo, Lambda, these are services that are getting great buzz here at the show that aren't going to make the Wall Street Journal or the big trade press, but this is geek this is geek tooling that they've proven and use it and then release it. Yeah, John, the same thing I wanted to point out is really the optimism of the people at this show. Cloud, many people thought it's a big threat, it's going to change, what's it going to do to my job? The people that are at this show, John, 
They're in the sessions. They're not just here getting t-shirts and free beer. They're in the sessions. They're learning about it. They're excited about the announcements. They're digging into all these tools. I, I mean, I was ta talking to uh, the, the CoreOS guys, and they said, anybody that we scan their badge, you know, they're going to be on our developer list. They're going to get you know, the hardcore coding things that go in here. And that's a lot of this audience, and not just the developers, the users, the business people that are finding new ways of having IT enable the business, new value back into the system, um, and it's exciting. Exciting. I mean, it's from a technology. What did you learn standpoint. in the hallway, Stu? Because you were, did a lot on uh, networking. You were really pounding the pavement. I want to say you did a great job this show. Yeah. I was very impressed with uh, your excitement. Certainly, fanboy of uh, James Hamilton, as am I. But you were really <laughs> awesome with him. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, you worked. You were working the parties. You were working out meetings. What did you learn? What so, did you learn so, in the hallway? So, John, you know, I, I love a community like this. Community built around, and they, they were really they're enjoying the tool set. They say they have good communication with what they're doing. The, it's a passionate user base, which uh, if, if I'm going to judge any you know, company and any show, that's what you want to see. When we go to shows like you know, Splunk.com, What was the buzz? Dude, what was the buzz? Bottom line me, bottom buzz. Um, what was the top buzz? I, I mean, John, you know, it's, I haven't seen you know, iHeart AWS bumper stickers, but uh, they probably give out a lot of them. Bumper sticker on, you know, I love Amazon. All right, Jeff, what real quick, let's close me. this puppy up. What did you see quickly? It, Conversations buzz, top things. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I would, I would reiterate what you're saying. I think people are really excited. The, the vibe here is great. Um, for me, the big takeaway was, you know, AWS is allowing, is now allowing enterprises, not just startups, but enterprises to rapidly iterate and respond to their customers just the way Amazon does. Uh, and, and that's really uh, a mark of taking on these enterprise challenges, helping enterprises do more with their data, work, worry less about the infrastructure, and really uh, apply that, that Uber focus on the customer, just like Amazon itself does. Well, I'm psyched to uh, wrap this show up with you guys. Great job, great shout out to the crew. Uh, Matthew, Greg, Patrick, all the guys back at the ranch, Dave Vellante tweeting away. As I end here, I'm looking at a tweet from Jeremy Burton and it says, the, it says EMC family of companies on stage at Techonomy event, which is run uh, another event by another publication called Fortune Mac, I know, plus Fortune. Uh, it's Gelsinger, Goulden, and Moritz. So, Stu, they're not going to go down without a fight. <laughs> EMC is not going to go down without a fight. Yeah, John, you know, I didn't hear only a couple of conversations about what, what's going on with Cloud Foundry at a show like this. Um, absolutely, the Federation is aware of what's going on uh, at Amazon and, and, and they're pivoting to try to, you know, uh, address the cloud. They've got plenty of cloud solutions, but uh, if I was working for, uh, you know, one of the traditional enterprise guys, uh, Cloud is real, cloud is here, and it's, uh, it's coming after for you fast. It's super exciting. My, my final takeaway observation is that Amazon, on all the customers we talk to, it's an engine of moving the ball down the field. People are seeing scale, they're seeing progress. This is the point where the running game, one yard of, of, of moving the ball, is going to move down quickly. Big passing play here, to use the analogy of football. And I, I just think it's awesome. And certainly exciting, Stu, I echo your comments. Great community, and for theCUBE and the Cube team, this is going to be a great sporting event in the tech athlete world that we cover. Everyone's involved, it's super exciting, and we're so, so glad to bring that to you. And that would not be possible without Amazon and uh, Trend Micro. Without their support, the Cube would not be possible and allow us to bring our passion and our, our hardcore data analysis to you. That's a, that's a wrap here at Amazon uh, Web Services 2014. This is the Cube. Keep watching and see us at their next event, uh, silkenangle.tv for all the details and videos. Thank you for watching.